Hi, everybody. Uh, so uh, I just want to get get started. Uh, just for anybody that doesn't know what's a dam, a digital asset management. So uh, a dam stores, manage, manages, renders rich media, including text, graphics, photo, video, audio. So everything that it's out there that we need to be able to store. And I, I would love for my panelists here to be able to introduce themselves a little bit more to talk about the uh, the them and uh, and then we we get it started so uh let's start with um mary uh thank you hi um mary grim new balance uh head of uh global digital operations um a dam we have a dam we use it all day every day we use it globally um we spend a lot of time these days thinking about it and you know, it's not just how we're using it now and our many customers of it, but how we're using it in the future. So there's a little teaser and I will pass it on to my uh, fellow speakers. All right, that's great. And, and yeah, this is the conversation we're gonna have today. We're gonna talk a lot about them. So that's very good. Uh, Shaul. All right, Shaul Cohen, Executive Vice President at uh, Jordash. And damn, you need it. <laughs> so we'll talk about it today and everybody they have their own uh, perspective on it but it's going to be interesting and fun there are a million paths to get there we'll explore a few that's great uh erica everyone i'm erica young i'm head of partnerships at sketchfab now epic games and dams are super important because it unlocks a uh, myriad of opportunities to um, connect your assets and create tons of different immersive experiences, streamline your production. Super, super important. So I'm happy to talk about that today. That's great. Thank you very much, uh, Yella. Uh, thanks, Isaac. Uh, Yella Sinstra, uh, Strategy Director at Patents.ai. Uh, we are started focusing on creating visual assets based on Clo files for now. Um, one of part of a company and the other part of the company focuses on AI and really towards personalization. And we think that uh, getting the assets right in the beginning, having them for multiple kinds of purposes uh, set up in the right way, it's not just uh, a good way to start and create benefits for now in your supply chain, but really always, always uh, already work towards a personalization uh, future. All right, thank you very much. And uh, Ashley? Hi, I'm Ashley Crowder. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Ventana. Uh, we are a 3D CMS um, that makes it incredibly easy to optimize, manage, and distribute files from Clo, Browseware, Moto, and others through our patented optimization. And I'm really excited to talk about DAMs because it's so important. Um, and it's so important the new components that you need with 3D. Um, so something with our headless architecture, we try and just give people the the bits and pieces they need to integrate into their current systems. Oh, that's great. And uh, lastly, myself. So I'm, I'm Isaac Korn and the Director of Innovation at Perry Ellis International. Uh, we have a great conversation today. Uh, damn digital asset management. It's something that in our digital world, we all have to touch. We all have to think about it. It's it's out there. We have scratched our heads about it. So, so it's a very good uh, conversation that we're going to have today. So I'm I'm going to kick it up with some questions that I have for you guys. So let's get started with Mary and uh, Shaul. So in, in what ways does what you intend to achieve with digital assets impact what you should be managing them from the get-go? Can you explain a little bit? Uh, let's start with Mary. So um, know the big picture, I think, helps. Uh, you know, I'll, I will start there, top down. It's not required, um, but, you know, to state the obvious, if when you get in the car and you know your final destination, regardless of how many stops, you know, it helps you get there, um, I'll say more efficiently, and it will certainly cut down on the fighting. Um, that's super uh, important um, in moving forward. And then uh, knowing what you're uh, striving for incrementally, what, what are you trying to do? And making sure that your, um, you know, it, 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 is it going to be state of the art? Is it going to be bleeding edge? Is it an incremental imp improvement, which there's huge value in? And being really clear about that helps get 
whoever you need aligned, aligned. Um, and it eases communication. Um, it helps the decision making process. And, you know, it gets everybody going in the same direction. So, you know, that the brass tacks of that is intention and really, you know, making sure that you understand the needs. What are the constraints? What's your timing? And then who are your partners? Like all those things up front, nobody wants to talk about it in terms of that's the that's the planning piece of it. It's not the, what are we doing with 3D? What are we doing with the latest technology? Um, but that really is so fundamental. And um, I don't think that can be overvalued. All right. Uh Joel? All right. So, so I think the challenge on the beginning is to, is to realize that you are being asked to predict the unpredictable. You are starting with something that you are not really sure where is it going to go, but you know that it's most likely going to grow. I always go back to, to examples that are maybe out of our uh, technolog technological uh, arena. So when I was growing up, I always, uh, as a kid, I only had two pairs of shoes, one for school days and one for the weekend and holidays. And I never realized like, and then when, when, when I grew up and started to acquire taste and acquire more clothes and shoes, I realized that I need a bigger closet and a, and a way to organize the things so I will know where they are and what they are. And I think this is something that everybody can relate to in, in our modern life. So what I do think that are critical things to realize from the get-go that you want to look at something that will be scalable, that you can grow at some point. Yes, you are starting with maybe one item, two items, three items, but at some point you'll have a lot. It's just by going one, one a day, you're, you're adding, you're building your closet to be very, very big. You also, the, the only th the, the difference here between the closet, this closet you may need to share with others. So you have to talk about how you're gonna allow access to, to the closet and how you're gonna get others to come and see what you have and what you need and, and how to contribute and how to borrow. Um, and I think that there needs to be also some, some element of openness to it. So that openness will allow you to look at it from, from elsewhere, to allow other system to analyze your, to analyze your call it closet. And, uh, and also for me, I'm, when I'm going and I want to buy a pair of shoes, I have to think about what do I have in my closet? Is it the same or is it different? Do I really need it? So all those considerations that are, we are living in our day to day, I could use the refrigerator as another example for, for everybody to relate, but this is exactly the same thing when we are dealing with, with our managing our assets is how can it scale? How can we easily access it? And how can we allow it to be open for others to, to, to borrow and contribute? That's, and, and that's great. So, uh, and, but what were you just say it's something that uh, I wrote some key words here because they're very important. Like our digital assets, they, they evolve throughout the time. So we need to be able to understand that when we choose a damn system that our digital assets are going to evolve and to be able to have that, that damn system that it's going to evolve with our, with our digital assets. It's very, very important. Also to be able to have accessibility. And now more than ever, we need to be able to, uh, have accessibility to the systems wherever we are. And, and the last thing that it's more important that a lot of people don't, don't think about it, it's the integration portion of it. You need to be able to have a system that easily integrates with your other systems in the company to talk to each other. Because if you select a system that doesn't talk to each other, then you're going to have a headache. So it's very important to have those keywords in your head, accessibility, evolution of the, the system and integration. So I think that's great. One thing to chime in there, I mean, the accessibility is so important. And now that everyone's moving towards 3D, I think it's so important to understand the different require, file requirements for these end use cases so you can actually use them, you know, like sales and marketing, they need it for Facebook, Instagram, or Snap. You know, it has to be a file size under six megabytes where, it, you know, a clo file or key shot can be, you know, 500. Um, and so just being able, and then, you know, being able to even view a 3D file, which most dams weren't built for to begin with. So, you know, starting with how do you integrate some components, at least to visualize, convert and, and distribute 3D. Um, and then thinking about, like you said, it's always going to change. The metaverse is here. Some amazing things <laughs> Epic is bringing, uh, you know, um, but I think it's really important, at least for now, what 3D has already drastically changed. 
Exactly. And I, and I feel that's that's definitely part of the evolution that we talked about it, because I think that a lot of dance systems were thought uh, or, or, or were started without having 3D in their minds, because 3D wasn't a, a very big or strong digital asset that a lot of companies were using. But as 3D got a bigger and stronger, that's something that we have to integrate to, the, to our dance system. So I think that right now a lot of people are saying, OK, my dance system doesn't accept 3D. How can I work with it? Do I need to integrate another system that works with 3D? So those are a lot of questions that I think companies are, are doing right now because 3D wasn't a very big part of their strategy and now it's becoming a very big part of their strategy. So that's uh, that, and, that's and, great, that, that's great actually. And one more comment about this because I think when we are talking about accessibility and sharing with others, we need to, to build a platform that enable different level of users to still understand and be able to. So we have customers, we have um, even people in the company, I hate to say it, that are not very techy. And uh, to start talking to them about file formats and about how to open it and, and things becoming very, very complicated and, and very quickly to say, I don't want to deal with it. So it's, it's allowing something that will be a very, very easy for the non-geeky uh, user to, to be able to use it, but also enable the, the most complicated um, user uh, to be able to, to elevate it and to take it further. But we always work within that uh, spectrum of, of the, for lack of a better term, my grandmother and, uh, and my kids. So it's a, one is, a, is very native in the environment, one this environment seem to seem very, very foreign. So we want to make it accessible to, to, every, to every level of user. And that is very, very critical on the thinking of, of accessibility. Uh, thank like you. It, I'd, I'd like to just add to that because it's something Ashley uh, picked up on as well. And to uh, just to really highlight the importance of it from a dam perspective, and that's what we're talking about, the dams, um, it really is, you know, I talk about it in terms of service, right? Those use cases, those users, um, Saul's grandmother, or, you know, what, whatever we are doing to get ourselves toward, uh, I'll call it the metaverse, as we're all talking about that these days, whatever that looks like in this very fluid space, it is about service at the end of the day. And, you know, you know, I will will offer out in my experience, it's really about your partners and understanding, making sure your partners, that integration piece of it and your tools, like the partners are partnering. You know, we're all we're all working towards this future that's not defined and and making sure that happens. So you can whoever our internal customers are, it is about providing the best service. At the end of the day, this is a tool and we wanted to make it, it as easy and as usable as possible. That's great. And that's a great transition to, to my next question. It's like, who are these right people? Who are the right users that should be at, at the core of the of the dance strategy? Uh, and um, Erica, do you, do you have an idea who, who are who should be those right people? Sure. I actually really love what Mary just said. I couldn't agree more. Um, partners are really important. That's why I got into partnerships. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think it's unrealistic for everyone to now understand technology. That's not for everyone to know and learn. Um, some people are great at sales and they should just focus on selling. And so luckily there's a lot of really great um, architects out there who can really build the technology to fit everyone's skill set level. And so I think the key is to get the right partners on board in, in order to create and structure what's needed and ensure interoperability between all the different components that you use, whether it's a CRM system, ERP, a DAM, um, different 3D software. That could be created in a way where anybody can log in and use it and not have to really know what's behind the hood. And I think that that's really key to get everyone on board to like this next phase in the world that we now live in. And, and that's correct. And, and, and I think a key word the, 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 the show also said is that uh, 
that there's needs to be different levels of people that can access the, the system because it, the system is not open for everybody. Not everybody has the same needs, but the system needs to be able to be accessible for everybody, but also in different levels so that everybody gets the information that they need, not more, not less, but but it's it, it's as usable for everybody because again, not everybody's very techy. So everybody, some some users might need the information, some users might not need the information so so that's 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 very important uh talking about users so who who in the company you feel should initiate that process of the damn system of the integration like inside the company who should be that that team that initiates the questions and who should participate in that decision making of the damn strategy um who would like to answer that question i'm very open <laughs> it's it's actually a very difficult question to ask because when you think about digital transformation so it, it, by definition it needs to be everybody so it's and everybody needs to access it and and to me i always like to take the the least um obvious candidate to somebody that does not want it does not like it that doesn't feel comfortable in in this new environment and Pair them with somebody who's a little bit more advanced in their in their exploration skills. So and and engaging between the two of them is is giving that range that even if somebody who's not very interested in it and not very comfortable in it gets to a point that they realize the value and use it, it it helps everybody else align along the way. But it's very difficult to 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 bring, I think if you have a one person that is responsible for this and that's their only role and without engaging everybody else, it will, I don't think it will succeed. I think so if, if you talk about the, the, the man, digital management, so your fabric team needs to deal with the digital twin of it. The, the technical need to, 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 uh, to pair with their, with their digital uh, partner, design, same thing, sales, everybody needs to, to pair with where will it, where will the digital process will take them understand it contribute their comment criticize it and uh, i always tell my team don't tell me the good things tell me only the bad things the good things we learn nothing the bad things we are we are we are looking as opportunity to improve so the the ones that are more negative to begin with to me are sometimes the the are the more interesting one because then you learn you hear from them why not makes you think what about that why not because we all we all fall in love with technology we love it oh it's so cute it's so cool it looks great <laughs> but what value does it really bring how does it make my day day to day better how does it bring more how, what's my roi on this it's like it's things that we don't always think about it as we look at as a, a new presentation but it's something that that the negative person in your team will bring very very quickly into your uh, will will ground you very very quickly and I, and i mean that grounding in a very positive way um i i, I agree uh, i agree 100 it's it's it, it, the beauty about these integrations and starting this journey about integration is that as you start the journey you're going to start learning your entire company's ecosystem your entire company's workflow and it's very important to be able to map those different workflows because you need to be able to understand how every single a thing is gonna affect each one of the departments and of course it's very hard to have one solution that fits all for everybody but as long as you were able to identify those workflows and how your decision for the new system is gonna affect those workflows and you have a solution for it then it's easier to be able to talk to the different stakeholders to the different people and tell them okay we understand that this is going to be an issue but this is how the new technology is going to solve it or this is how we're going to change the workflow to be able to solve this issue so it's very important to be able to be open and understand the workflows for all the entire company so thank you very much for pointing this out uh, isaac if i could i just wanted to add sure, to yeah. that from a, a partner perspective um and and it depends i think on where you are from a um you know when we talk about the right people if you're, you're a, a company that's just starting out with this really having you know I, you know I, again i think from my experience like a senior leader um somebody that believes in the value and can help drive the prioritization um lots of times operational things like this get lost in the shuffle in terms of you know what's a priority and and having that 
person or people championing it is really, you know, critical. And like Shal, I usually have a, um, you know, I, I call it, a, you know, a, um, a skeptical consultant. And, I, you know, it's usually an influencer in the organization who is very skeptical about what the endeavor is going to be. And it is extremely helpful in being able to kick the tires on an ongoing basis from a very critical eye. And, you know, it, it never fails to have a positive outcome, both on the skeptic um, and the end product. So I think that is really critical. And then if you're a maturing company, that senior leadership engagement and making sure from a brand, a brand perspective, you know, digital transformation is something we're all talking about. And within organizations, making sure that that is actionable, what that means, because it means different things in different parts of the organization when it comes to a dam system and integration between senior leadership and business really being partnered with IT. Those are those critical partnerships, I think, that will be ongoing into a future state, um, but will help build a super solid foundation. Uh, and I 100% agree with you. And, and what we have seen also internally here is that if, uh, if we have a management on top of these new integrations, these two new innovations, then that it, it gets it gets the idea quicker to, to the entire team. So management needs to be behind all of these uh, type of new technologies that the companies want to be able to onboard and want to be able to ongo. Because if, it, if management doesn't believe in, in this, then I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. It's, it's better to start from the top and then go down from it that start from the bottom and going up because then it's going to be it's going to be very hard, hard to influence people so management need to be needs to be behind it a hundred percent um as we talk about the current platforms that we have so um yella this this question is for you do you feel that existing platforms like plm or either 3d solutions can act as uh, digital asset management platforms, or do you feel do you need to invest in in new ones? Um, I I think um, there might be a shift going on in the way of we can use dam systems because we, we know dam systems often to uh, as the place where we store output files. Uh, but if we look at especially at 3D, whether it's something that is used in the in the metaverse as a 3D file and that can live and can interact, uh, or uh, looking at 3D at the way we can render it, we don't have to always store the output file. We don't always have to wait, uh, have that single file in there. With rendering speeds, uh, they don't have to be eight hours anymore. Uh, we render at some high quality photorealistic images in minutes. Um, sometimes it's the question, what are you actually storing? For us, it's very simple. We, uh, we need a CLO file or any other 3D file, high quality. And from then on, we say, what kind of pose do you want? What kind of shot do you want? And a few minutes later, you got it there. So it's also for us a little bit, if you using your, let's say your 3D solution where you store your high quality 3D, have a fast rendering system, in between the dam and that, um, I'm not sure what the dam system is anymore. So mm -hmm. that is one one of my considerations that I think might be worth to consider. Um, on the other hand, that brings also quite a lot of challenges um, because you need to think beforehand, what kind of files are you using? Is it a PLM file? And that means it might not be the actual file that is going to be uh, used in production, so there might be a distance difference between the 3D and the actual garments that you are uh, delivering. So, what is the the latest version? Uh, similarly, um, you need to prepare people for uh, um, thinking about: is it either beautifully ready for a render, usable visually, or on the other hand, uh, is it just as a pattern and a pattern maker? in 3D and a someone that makes it visually really beautiful, those are really different disciplines in uh, 3D uh, design, I would say. So th those things are, are very important, I think, to, uh, to align, uh, have to do with your purpose. If you have the purpose just to have really nice assets that you can use interactively in 3D or have nice quick renders, uh, it's, it's different than the same PLM file that you want to use for uh, manufacturing. Um, 
hope right. that somewhat answers your question. <laughs> Uh, anybody wants to, to answer? Because I think this is a question that it's going to come up to everybody. Like they have yeah. current systems. Most of the people who should have a PLM, can a PLM or the existing systems, can they act as a dam or do they need to invest or what considerations do they need to make? Yeah, I'll take that. I mean, the, the best in class organizations I've seen, it's it, you can go from design to sales and marketing with that same asset and it's going to change throughout but that's why whether you're upgrading your plm system to have real-time 3d capabilities or you're at least connecting that with a dam system that has that it's so important otherwise your sales and marketing team is going to end up hiring vendors to recreate assets you you might already even have but they just don't know um i can't tell you how many you know social media teams i talk to that's like i don't know if we have 3d and i was like i know your 3d team let me connect <laughs> you know um and so what we've seen work really well is one having a plm that can store your 3d design files well whether it's key shot moto you know etc um having a 3d viewer and conversion system there where people can see it in real time in 3d and making sure that same 3d viewer you know if you pick babylon or 3js your sales and marketing team is using you know that same type of viewer for e-commerce because otherwise your design team's like no the color is this red and then your you know social media team's like no the red is off because you're looking at at two different viewers which it can be the same asset but appear differently so again streamlining that process whether it's building everything into your PLM system, which you know we've worked a lot with PTC to kind of upgrade and enable 3D capabilities within Flex PLM, or just making sure your two systems are, are talking to each other using the same base technology and, and sharing the same assets, you're gonna have huge cost savings across your organization, being able to just use that same asset everywhere. I'll jump in here. Um, so, there isn't a one stop shop situation. Um, I've never seen it and I don't think it'll ever exist, mainly because all of our teams, you know, all of our, our companies here, we do what we do well, meaning that our dev teams are focused on, you know, our um, contribution to, you know, technology. Sketchfab. You know, um, we are dedicated to real-time renders, meaning that you can upload any 3D asset onto our platform and you can, um, uh, you know, move it around. You can immerse yourself, you know, in uh, uh, looking at this asset online. All of our dev team members are dedicated to making that happen. And so I think instead of looking for this like all-in-one solution, it's more about ensuring operability. I feel like I say that word all the time, but it's so true. It's finding that ideal 3D viewer, whether it's Sketchfab, whether it's Ventana, big up to Ventana. Um, and then, you know, uh, what, where do you get your materials? Um, what what um, digital twin software are you using? Is it browser? Is it Clo? And ensuring that everyone across all your teams understand how to utilize these um, different software and how they work together. And it's like, I want to leave it up to Clo and Browseware to create, you know, great digital twins of apparel. Like Sketchfab does not want to take that on, but we will take on how you can view it online in, in your, uh, on your e-com site. And so it's all about all of us working together. There's so much that we need to tackle. And so it's really gonna be in team effort to create that really um, nice assortment of tools that everyone can benefit from. And I'd like to add on to that, Erica, if I could. Um, I, I think it depends on what your needs are. So I, I completely right. agree to say, and I, I will repeat myself to really understand And you don't have to know all the answers, but knowing those use cases, knowing what your needs are going to be, anticipating some of the unknowns, um, I think it's going to be a little bit different depending on the organization and where you're starting from. So, and, and that will dictate a, a lot in terms of what the right solution is. And then it will probably change over time, especially in the space. Mm -hmm. So, and that's being open to what you want to, um, 
allow some fluidity to, to be open to know new technology is coming and, and you want that, um, is definitely going to be a key part of that decision making. But as far as dams go, it, it depends on what your needs are and then what your choices can do for you. Mm -hmm. I agree. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that's it's, it's very important that um, uh, I also personally I feel that that PLM systems, as all of you have has said, uh, have said, have also evolved very much to accept different type of files, different type of integrations, and the same PLM system have seen that they need the help of other systems to be able to integrate, to be able to have a more complete um, um, e ecosystem of, of solutions out there, because again not a system can be everything for everybody so uh that, that that's very important so i uh, i do have a question that it's not on our piece of paper so guys feel free to to, to answer it so something that it, we're seeing a lot internally right now is that as we review different dance dam systems and the way that they originally the dam systems were were created so originally the dam system was just created as a thought to uh, I have this final asset, I'm gonna store it, and then somebody can take it from the asset. But now more and more and more, we're seeing that there's a lot of communication internally that happens that needs to transfer assets internally to be able to have approvals, to have communications and all that stuff. So how important it's to be able to consider communication, internal communication, when you uh, try to, to be able to uh, to to look for a dam system, or do you feel that that should be something that it's separate that should be included into the the, the solution? Uh, what's your guys' thought about like internal communications through the creation of this digital asset, and how important it is to have a system that allows that communication? Anybody can jump in. <laughs> we've we've seen people really like the collaboration features with, within it um, because you know as people design for wholesale you get feedback you make changes there, there's so many changes that happen to a garment or product before it's ready for for that B two C sale so and then now with global teams um, you know the screenshots of three D and emails back and forth is a nightmare <laughs> so just having you know that one place. And for non a non technical person, someone who doesn't even know what browser is, but they could actually view the three D file, interact, drop a pin, make a comment, um, is is a game changer for people. Yeah, I uh, I agree with that. It's very important. I'll jump in. Sure. Okay. Um. So I started my career as a footwear designer uh, a long time ago. I won't date myself, <laughs> but it was when I sketched everything by hand. Um, I was designing 100 shoes a season. It was insane. And I would basically draw the designs on a last, take pictures with not even a good smartphone at that time, and then email it to the manufacturers in China. And we were under such tight um time restraints that sometimes they would have to take my terrible lit image and literally design from that image and it was a disaster and it ended i ended up spending half my 20s in china <laughs> because there wasn't this really nice streamline of communication we weren't using technology at that time so um from experience using these tools using a good dam and having these you know um comments uh, uh social sort of components to the dam is crucial and i wouldn't i might not have had to spend half my 20s in china if i had access to this technology that we now have <laughs> uh, so i spent half of my 20s in China, but willingly, I actually lived there and it wasn't too bad. So let's. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. No complaints. <laughs> it wasn't so bad. But, but you know, the, the communication element is a very hot topic and always very 
uh, maybe divisive. Because for me, it's a lot of times we're dealing with all those systems, they, and, and I know they're taking screenshots and pictures and putting everything in the same system, communicating, commenting on, on everything. And then you are, sometimes you, you find yourself looking at seven different systems, trying to get an information of one simple question. And one of my, one of my asks from my team is scenarios like this, just pick up the phone come open the door, come talk to me. So it's, you're, you're going from the, from the most advanced technological systems available to the oldest uh, communication skill is just speak. Um, and and we, are, we are working along that gamma. But I definitely think there is a lot of room for improvements uh, in the ability to communicate things clearly. Um, going back to, to Erica, you know, the, the sketches. So now we have a lot better abilities to, 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 to convey an idea, to send it uh, around the world. Picture is worth a thousand words. So when you are when and when you are giving it in a in an accessible 3D that gives you the the ability what we to replicate a so by kind of sample. We used to send samples, so a factory can because we joke around. The best tech pack in the world is is a sample. So so now we can do that in in a virtual way and and give clarify information in, in a visual way that will help even somebody with, who does not speak the same language, does not come from the same cultural background, exposure, because even the, the definition of what looks good is very, is, is very geographically driven. So just communicating a concept with something visual is a lot easier. But again, you know, the communication platforms, uh, I'm sure, will evolve a lot more and, uh, and putting everything maybe in one system and one place that, that the communication is going through or pulling the information from different platform and giving a summary. I think there is a long way to go on this. It's a topic that, uh, that Isaac was not on our, on our preset uh, question, but I think it's a huge topic on its own is how to communicate clearly, efficiently, with using all the new tools that are uh, popping up almost daily. All right, thank you. So, um, sorry to put that question out there, but it was very important uh, for me to be able to understand this because I know there's a lot of people that are thinking about this and how they should go about it. Um, uh, also, very something very important is, and, and I know it from heart because that's 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 a struggle that that we face is that you can select the best system out there or the best system that works for you out there. But if you don't standardize the way that you name your assets or you don't, do you don't have some standardization for those assets, the system is not going to work. So uh, this is a question for Eric and for all of you guys as well, is that how important or how do you go about creating those standards, the naming, the tagging, and the storing across the organization. So how, how do you start that process? And, and, and of course, how important is it? Sure, I want to start with uh, how important it is. And uh, I like to tell stories and speak from experience. Um, a really good friend of mine is a master at branding. She's branded so many brands. Um, one that I, I'm sure you guys have all seen is um, the Hugo Boss rebranding. She was on that team. So you can see how their logo has changed. They have new patterns that they've introduced. There was a, a really nice rollout across social media that happened. And it all came from this brand book that she created. Everyone knew what fonts to use, what colors to use. Um, even scale of, of logo to, to image. So even if it's a social media strategy, um, new online strategy, everything looked seamless. So it told the same story. And you should create your digital brand book in the same way. So, um, you know, when it comes to uh, using a dam and um, creating these th digital assets, it's what kind of avatars do you use? Um, what kind of lighting do you use in your 3D environment? If everyone knows these standards, then that asset could be utilized for all different kinds of purposes. And, and so I, I say the more detailed, the better. 
um, and from even um, the tagging, the you know um, our the the description. Um, you know, uh, it's it's something that should be looked at as a guideline for for all stakeholders and pretty much everyone within the organization is a stakeholder here. So um, starting from the very beginning and implementing these really good habits from the very beginning means that you'll have that really high quality asset that you can use in tons of different um, uh, scenarios. And, you know, I, I will talk about the metaverse. Everyone's talking about the metaverse. No one really knows what the metaverse is ultimately, ultimately going to look like. But we know that 3D is going to be a part of this metaverse. And so why not have all of your assets optimized? Um, you, you apply textures that have all the naming conventions, everything. So if, if it's in Unreal, um, and I hope it is, um, then you can uh, uh, download that asset within Unreal, and you'll be. It is guaranteed that it will look exactly how you want it to look, whether it's on Unreal, whether it's in Sketchfab, whether it's in Browser or Flow, and and having that guideline from day one will ensure that. Anybody else? I was going to say, I would love to add to that to say, yes, <laughs> uh, absolutely. And then also just that it, to add to say it's about the flow of it. You know, one of the things that I say um, at New Balance a lot is we can have the best imagery. But if the data, it, it, again, this is the unsexy part. If the data behind it isn't correct or it's not there, it doesn't matter it, it, if it's unfindable, if it's unusable, if it's unsearchable. And if it can't move on, if it if it can't get to its destination, it's it's not creating the value. So that understanding from a naming convention perspective, you know, it's not just about a dam, it's about the other systems it needs to flow to and the constraints within them. And being able to add metadata as an image, an asset matures, changes, flows, that's the critical part. And it all starts with the right naming convention and the usability of it and making sure you have the right data. I think that's the ball game. Um, you know, and we, we, we love the tools. They're going to keep, you know, evolving, which is exciting. Um, but it really is the, the data piece of it. That is the, it's the, um, it's the momentum that's going to help us introduce and integrate new tools with ease if we get that uh, piece of it correct from the beginning. I would like to take a little bit uh, opposite approach to that. Um, I, I really think that, you know, that of course there's, it's, it's easier and better, but Instagram does not have a naming convention, but you can still, every kid that goes on it can find certain things that he's looking for. And I think that is very, very critical to, to create a system that is more intuitive and without being necessarily rigid on, on naming convention. Yes, you can go with a very rigid naming convention, but apply hashtags. Uh, for lack of a better term, as many as you can. So then you can search it easily for whatever you need and whoever is, and without going through a, a manual of how to find your assets, you can find it just with very intu intuitive hashtags. We, we applied a lot of things like this within our system that, that I encourage my team, just throw words. I don't care what the words are. And, and so you will be able to search by them. On top of that, once you start uh, rolling uh, artificial intelligence that really helps with that scenario, and, and in, in our system, we have, uh, we have in the background AI, so nobody is intimidated by the terminology, but, but when, I, when I loaded for something very, very quick, I can put a huge image library and say, show me all the men's shirts in color green and, and be able to find it with, with a very intuitive terminology, with, the, with plain, simple English, without saying, okay, this file was uh, created as an as a iPhone image, this was from an Android phone. All of those are very, very critical to create. Yes, the naming convention is important as on the back end, but the front end need to be very, very intuitive, easy. Hashtag is, is uh, maybe the, the best descriptive to it. So it's uh, quality asset, assets that are searchable by a hashtag. That's that's to me how things needs to be done. So it's intuitive, easy flow. You don't uh, you don't need a second. You don't need a master in computer science to find uh, the fabric that you're looking for. 
I want to I love your hashtag. Sorry. <laughs> I <laughs> love the hashtag. Um, I will say, you know, Instagram and Facebook, they they do actually have product IDs. Um, and something we've seen is if the social media team is using totally different product IDs than the other team, it can be a nightmare. So I just a warning, <laughs> but love the hashtag idea. <laughs> and and I, I don't think that's a, a contrary view. I, I think that's part of the, I'll call it the metadata. I, I think it's an and, not a, a, a diversion. I, you know, I don't think naming conventions have to be complicated. They just have to be the right ones. And you can you can figure that out along the way. But to your to your point, it is about how to find it. It has to be intuitive. It has to be easy. It has to be simple. And that's part of hashtags, metadata, however we are designing it. That's the part. Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure we are creating something to get something to people. It, you that's know, it. they need to find it. That's, that's, the, that's our reason. You know, and, and I'll say in our case, we want it, we want product on bodies. We want people to see it, um, find it and, you know, search, find what they want the first time. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I think that yeah. the, the labeling, uh, we as an AI company, we understand all the problems with semantics there. Like you understand you have two different departments using different terms, uh, whether it's to class or mind. Yeah, it might be the same. Uh, but uh, with AI, there is so much possible. In the end, it doesn't even matter what the actual name convention is there. If you color pick the, the color or the type of pattern from a, a pattern picker, uh, AI can do all that. Um, for me, it's a matter of waiting. And But on the, on the other hand, um, those, those systems need to be trained in order to be really tuned to the way you work. Um, so I would say start doing it yourself. Use your naming conventions. Also put in your own uh, vocabulary. Uh, but after a while, have an AI company have a look at it. And they will be able to, uh, to tease out this human language uh, and make it very, very useful uh, in use. It's a matter Great of time. Point. Yeah, and I think, and again, it requires a lot of internal discipline and at the beginning to be able to set up these uh, these standards and and also it's to be able to 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 grow that uh, AI portion of it to be able to simplify the whole thing uh, my old take my take always on AI is that AI can be as smart as the process that it's learning so you have to give that information to AI to be able to become as smarter and help you throughout the process but but it's always started with a lot of discipline and understanding how to be able to start that and then be able to move forward. So, so that's great. Um, uh, let's let's see. So, um, what are the best practices for creating 3D assets that will scale across B two B sales, e commerce, social media, and well, the new world of metaverse? Um, Ashley, what's your thought behind that? Yeah, I think it's so important to design from the beginning with real time in mind. Um, so previously, you know, people were mainly thinking about 2D renders from 3D. So you could use V-Ray, you could use these render only materials. The problem is if you're creating with render only, creating these 2D renders, and then all of a sudden want to take that same file to the web, to social media, to a game engine, you're going to have to, one, spend the time, have your 3D artists change all the materials. Two, you're going to drive yourself crazy trying to color match and make it, you make sure it looks the same as that, that V-Ray render or similar. Um, so it's better to design from the beginning with real-time materials uh, in mind. Something we've also seen work really well is making sure your company has that you know, your company materials are set. Um, they're defined, uh, they were created with real time in mind, but they, but everyone is using that same bucket of materials and not custom, you know, custom creating and custom building, because then again, that red, red velvet you're looking at is a different red velvet than the person in Portland is using. And then everyone's arguing about what it looks like on the website, <laughs> you know? Um, so keeping, you know, 
a consistent fabric library that's real time ready from the beginning is just going to make your life so much easier. I think I think you you hit the point with uh, real time ready animation ready. Um, the, the the point for me there is don't make it visually good only. If you are actually producing your product, it also needs to fit in real life. And I know, uh, especially working with young uh, graduates uh, that have a three D mindset, um, they often make really nice stuff for the metaverse uh, in that sense but it will not be produced at all so i would say uh, educate your pattern makers and indeed keep the real time in mind uh, but i think it's easier to convert uh, the pattern makings with a really good pattern into something compatible uh, with real time and animation than whether you're already designing for animation uh, and then working the other way around Exactly. Oh, and, my... I, and I think it's such a pretty good something that I always talk to my team internally. We always have that discussion is that this is how your garment fit and this is how how, how it works out. And then and some of the designers want to say, like, no, this is how I, I want it to look. So uh, so we we'll always have that discussion is that if you create it to fit this way, this is how it's going to look. It's like different. It's like I always give the example when you go to to any fast food restaurant and you see the image of the burger and it looks amazing and then you order the burger and then you get something totally different it's like this is false of advertising and i know i know that we always want to be able to show something so inspiring in people how they're going to look and everything but uh on our end i think if you try to manage the workflow that once you create that digital asset from the beginning it doesn't have a lot of touch points along the way, then it can go through the system much easier and you streamline the process rather than to have different touch points in different parts because you want to make it look better. You need to change the fabric here. You need to change the lighting there. So if, if you create the 3D asset or the asset itself uh, correct from the get-go, then there's less touch points. So that I think that that's, a, that, that's very good. Uh, we have some questions from the audience, so that's that's great. They're, they're interested. So talking about 3D, there's there's one question about 3D. Not sure it belongs a lot in uh, in the dam, but they have a lot of questions in the 3D. So how do you see 3D assets working with on-demand ma manufacturing? So um, an open question. That's totally my alley. Um, <laughs> I'm spending a lot of time now trying to figure out how will that work because we are in many areas definitely you know in the in the marketing in the e-com we we push the envelope very very technological savvy customers users they are all going forward in the manufacturing end we are still i would call it stone age and taking that high tech rendering that we created and then going and uh, what yellow was touching on before is to to go back and and actually produce the garment you're almost going back to zero and that gap is has to be bridged and bridged quickly because if we are creating and if we are creating something in 3d that is not possible to be produced it's for our industry it's worthless you can sell it as nft but it's not going to produce it's not going to help as uh, as garment production garment or shoes um it's not going to be helpful and then taking what we created virtually and breaking it to pieces for a manufacturer to understand how to execute it the best possible way the most efficient way the clearest way is critical 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 and i think for me personally this is where we this is where we're going to spend some time in the next couple of years to customize the way that the output of our uh, crazy visions that we do on uh, 3D and how to actually make it into a easily to pro easily produced garment that will make it to the customer and 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 then one can push the other the manufacturing can push the the virtual and the virtual will push the the manufacturing and that's where we need to go but it's an awesome question uh, whoever asked that question so uh, kudos for that question i think it's something that is in many, many areas is being neglected, overlooked, but it is critical. As somebody who spent a lot of time in the factories, looking at how this uh, 
elaborated visuals needs to be finally executed, I, I realize that there is a lot of work to be done and, 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 and we definitely need to go that, uh, that route. I think there is, it's a very in, in a very infinite stage of, of getting there, but, but I think there, is, there are a lot of low hanging fruits to, to, make it, to make a huge impact there quickly. On behalf of Sketchfab, you can utilize our APIs to create a Nike ID-like experience. So you can embed a 3D asset, so it could be a suit, and you can create um, an experience online where you can customize your own suit. And then you can customize the output of what we call a configurator. And the output then becomes a guideline for the manufacturer to actually create the suit. And so this technology already exists. A lot of uh, companies utilize our APIs for exactly this purpose. And it doesn't just stop at apparel. Um, we've created ring configurators, footwear configurators. So, um, you know, in terms of what happens once they get the information at a manufacturer level, that's something that has to be ironed out. But um, the uh, client facing, um, experience is something that you can easily set up utilizing our technology. The, right the customer and the customer end on configuration. I think the the industry have done a lot of work. I think Nike when they started with the Nike ID was a great mm -hmm. customer configurator, and they were maybe ahead of their time, and 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 they evolved since. But I'm talking about things that are very very simple. When we are stitching a garment in 3D, we are putting what type of stitch it is that information is not communicated clearly to the factory. And that is something so simple to do in a low hanging fruit that I think this is gonna come in the next couple of months from, uh, from some of the 3D solutions that I've been talking to, to, to get this done. If I stitch it with a, with, a, with a single needle, I want an indicator on the pattern saying these two pieces are going to be connected with a single needle machine. That helps the factory engineer understand the garment, understand the intention, and, and, and then obviously it, it goes and translates to the ability of doing accurate costing, time management. Uh, it, it, there, is, there, is, there is a whole world that is almost untouched. So, so we are happy to explore. If, uh, there's, there is yeah, I, exploration I, I, and virtual exploration that we are going I, to. I think that we open a can of worms here because that can be a totally different panel that we can discuss. And we're, we're here to talk about them. So... Um, uh, this is a thought, and uh, uh, this is a, I think that it will be one of our last questions. And 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 I would like to ask to all of you guys in the panel, and and as a final thought uh, for for this session as well. So, what are the session the, the essential tools that your company needs to succeed at digital asset management? So, uh, I want to open this question, and also you guys feel free to give your final thoughts on 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 this panel. So I'm, I'm going to go around the, the table. Uh, Yella. I'm not prepared for this question. Oh, don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> um, Neri? Uh, I don't mind going. Do it's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to jump okay. in, but it's okay. please. As far as essential um, tools go, you know, it depends where you are. And well, I think we're all gonna answer differently, but um, just really making sure that you understand what your needs are, which we've talked about a lot, um, which it, it's, you know, I think that's an essential element in and that ownership, those pieces of it, having the right people involved, um, th those go, it goes so far. And then we're in a place now, you know, it's cross industry. And it's about technology. There's so many resources out there. Um, you don't have to go it alone. You can get a lot smarter before you even start. So I'm just going to throw that out, and I'm, I'm sure folks will add on. For me? Okay, I'm, I'm ready for the question. There you go. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think for me, it's, it's, it's both tools and people. Uh, tools, there's a variety. You have to make the ones that fit your, uh, your purpose. Uh, I, I strongly believe it should be uh, real-time ready, but with a pattern focus. Uh, that is going to make a huge, uh, a huge difference. Uh, very simple things, uh, pins, uh, flexibility, 
uh, particle distance, uh, just things that you need to be doing in your 3D development. And that's going to make a huge difference either when real-time rendering or uh, when making it ready for uh, uh, something uh, online uh, or pre-rendered. Um, thing is, uh, in the end, I think um, once you have your assets properly set up, you don't have to generate just one image. You can you can use your digital assets on a variety of avatars, on a variety of backgrounds, with a variety of, of backgrounds, lightings, uh, and so on, fitted with your brand, uh, but assets first. All right. I, like uh, I, I think Ashley, I know you were eager to say something. I just am happy to. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I mean, to get more uh, specific, I think what's really important um, to be able to go from design to sales and marketing is to have one, um, you need a 3D viewer so people can view it and agree on that. Um, I agree with Eric on setting that lighting. What is your standard HDRI map everyone's going to be using? And to make it easily flow, you need an optimization tool in the back. So you can take that Clo Keyshot file, automatically optimize it for e-commerce, social media, these other end use cases, which a lot of people use us for. And then they might use our viewer, they might use Sketchfab. You know, it's like everyone pulling these different pieces in together of, of what, what they need, but it's a viewer optimization in real time ready assets um and obviously i love all things 3d so yeah <laughs> I, I think that uh, if, if i'm probably the last one i think the most important tool you need to bring to this exploration is curiosity is curiosity that curiosity on your own process why is it being done this way what's the purpose of this how is it being done and then curiosity about the tools that are available out there. There are so many tools every day. There are new tools that are being uh, introduced. Keep your curiosity going on what, what it is out there that can help your process. And then curiosity how to, how to integrate those tools out there with your process and, and generate improvement. Those, I think, to me, the most important tool that you can bring into this is curiosity. All right, so uh, they, they asked me to wrap it up. I see David there. So final thoughts on, on my end. Remember when you start your journey, try to start uh, from the top, have management be, be, be right there with you guys. When choosing a tool, make sure that the tool has is accessible for everybody, that it's a tool that can evolve with the digital assets and that can you can integrate to your current systems and Always think about uh, having standards from the get-go to be able to name your assets correctly. Make sure that you can tag and put as, as much of metadata to your assets so you can find them quickly. And uh, and again, be able to integrate and, and have curiosity, as Shaul said, like think about it, think about the different things that you can do with all of your assets.